Hey guys, welcome for West Virginia. I'm gonna go over my micro camper with you. I wanna do a little bit of a deep dive and show you some things that I kinda of missed on the build itself. There's some specifics like uh, the tire life, how much does it weigh? I'm gonna to try to take care of all these things. If you do like the video, please consider subscribing, giving it a like, sharing it. I appreciate that. Before we look on the inside, I wanna tell a quick story about this outside here. We have a broken window and we have a lot of damage here. A tractor trailer driver on a crew that I was working on backed into it when he pulled into the parking lot while I was sleeping in it and it startled me awake and tore up the side really good instead of the trailer collapsing in it actually held up well and just pushed the camper sideways let's take a look inside I taped up the area where the uh, where the damage came through okay so some some folks have asked like what about these doors? Why did you make them slide instead of putting them on a hinge? Well, I did use a hinge, but what happens is when you slide this door in here, let's say I slide it in, then it slides in like that, slides out. If you put this hinge in this corner, this extra piece on the back here will bind up in there, so it has to be able to clear this piece. And I have that inset about two inches so that this roof metal can overlap and keep the weather out. So that's uh, that's a question I've got a couple times. Why not just use a hinge? Because this piece directly was not clearing this piece. It would only allow the door to open a quarter of a full swing. There was a question about the doors being so thin that they would warp. Well, this door is perfectly straight and still nice and solid for being so thin. Works out real nice. I couldn't be happier with how that turned out. This bit of framing has really kept it square and this handle that I made really kind of helps. This overlapping piece also really helps. And to open it up I just feel like this. To design the window, I cut a 10 inch circle into the exterior wall and a 3 8 inch piece of plywood. I then cut a square piece of glass slightly larger than 10 inches. I used construction adhesive to glue the glass to the 3 8 inch plywood. Then I cut three 3 quarter inch boards to length. I used a table saw to cut a recessed edge on one side of the 3 quarter inch boards that allowed the 3 8 inch plywood to seat flush then glued the plywood to the three quarter inch boards. Now I had a framed window. I glued the complete window to the inside of the exterior wall and finally used a heavy clear roofing caulk to seal the window from the elements. The trick with that window is that the glass isn't round, it's square. This is where my air conditioner was. Now I'm using my air conditioner back in my house again, but this box is a diffuser. What that is, it allows air to come in underneath and then blow out the top so that it didn't blow on me as my head was up in that direction. On the floor here I used a couple hinges so that I could get a tie down uh, hook in here and if I needed to tie anything down. So I've got those on the floor. They work really good as a way to hook a tie down. On the panels inside I've got these side supports and then I have um, I used paneling caulk just from Home Depot to supplement the glue that's on that's in between the plywood and the stud. Up top here I uh, did reinforce a little bit more with glue and screws, two screws and just put those little triangle reinforcements. Up on the ceiling I simply used the same wood as the walls and just glued uh, those panels to the light framing that I had on the ceiling as you can see there. Looking from the front to the back from the inside this is your view it's nice you got plenty of room to lay down. Sitting down my head still about 10 inches from touching the top. Regarding the damage I used Bondo just to make it through the work season with the uh, camper sitting outside over the winter uncovered and with the uh, vibration, the Bondo did not hold, so it is in a mode of flaking off. I wouldn't suggest Bondo. I would uh, suggest just replacing the whole panel. The tires, people have asked how long did they last. They lasted 9,000 miles per tire. And uh, I, I've pulled it for 21,000 miles for work, so I went through a couple tires. I always stopped at... Um, 
tractor supply and got me a new tire. One thing you'll, you'll also notice while we're down here is that when I built this camper, I overlapped the frame for a cleaner look. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of folks build these and they leave that frame exposed right here, but the wood comes all the way down. And then underneath here, I used foam sealant to go between the frame and the wood as necessary. Some folks have asked how I bent the metal. Um, right here using a, a dovetail technique from doing HVAC work. I just made a slice, a slice, a slice, a slice, a slice, and then used this really good clear roofing uh, caulk that is held up really nicely to go along there and on the inside. It, it actually sticks to galvanized metal, so look for that feature when you go by that caulk. Up front, you can see where the uh, hole is where the air conditioner was. Now I'm using that air conditioner right over here. The goal wasn't to make the fanciest camper that's ever been made. If I spent, you know, two months on the camper, I could get probably a lot better camper than this one. The goal was to pull myself 21,000 miles, have an air conditioner and a mattress in here with some blankets, and have a place to sleep each night so I didn't have to get hotel rooms. You could surely make a more complex, uh, you could put speakers in it, wiring, all that, but for what I needed was real basic camping at the job site. This worked perfectly. So a lot of folks have asked me where I got my roof, my sheet metal. Uh, this is a piece of 26 gauge, uh, four by 10 foot long, galvanized sheet metal. I got it from Ferguson Supply. I'm not sure if that's a nationwide su supply chain, but uh, I got it from Ferguson Supply and it was 49 bucks. I noticed in 2020 when everything went really, or 2021 when everything went really high, it got up to over $70 for this. The lumber prices and stuff, it's not even worth talking about. Uh, they've been fluctuating. I saw a two by four for 740 or 737. When I bought them, they were like $2.58 when I bought my two by threes to build this. Okay, so some folks have wanted to know like, how heavy is this thing? It's super, super easy to move around. I'm gonna go demonstrate right now. Easily pick it up and just move it around. Super light. Another thing I found that it was so light that you could just push on the back and the tongue will come up, just like this. That's practically no tongue weight. One other thing I wanted to talk about was the trailer cost. I bought my trailer for 300 bucks. It was used. Uh, people gave me some flack for paying that much for a used Harbor Freight trailer. Well, in 2020, you couldn't go to Harbor Freight and give them your money. I tried to. Uh, the trailers were just unavailable for, for some reason. I'm not going to go into that. But uh, now the same trailer is $150 more, and they'll gladly take your money, unfortunately. So I have one sitting in the garage, and it's uh, $550. Bucks. One other thing I was asked, the, uh, how, did I power my, how did I power my air conditioner? I used the generator. Uh, it's just super simple. Now let's do what we can to weigh this thing. One uh, YouTuber suggested that I use a scale to... Uh, go under each wheel and then I'm going to do the scale under one wheel, the scale under the other wheel, and then the scale under the tongue, add those up and I guess that would be the weight. Here we go with an attempt to weigh the tongue. Right there, stay up, stay up. I got 38.2 pounds. 38.2 pounds, super, super light. Okay, let's try to weigh this thing. Get that ready, pull it forward. All right, we're on. That wheel is on anyway. That wheel is showing 194 pounds. All right, let's try this other wheel. Let's get the scale, scale turned on. Okay. All right. It's showing oh, 192.8 pounds. 
Uh, one person was uh, concerned about how the, how would this wood hold up after a while. Well, it, it, it's holding up really well. I do have a little bit of wear where I might have went a little light on the stain and seal. I used two coats of Thompson and then two coats of clear spray paint on it. Um, so you got four coats and it's held up well, but the camper set outside all winter long uncovered. And uh, I pulled it uncovered. I never threw a tarp over it. Only now in the past two months, which it's been about 15 months since I built it, only in the past two months has it, has it been out of the elements and it's held up really well. You'll see some light uh, usage in this spot outside of the, da the Bondo damage there. It's really well. It could just use a light sanding and a, maybe a retouch up of uh, stain or seal. There's a couple small ripples in it. But that doesn't mean you're not camping. That just means you just can touch it up a little bit. Or even just paint it. It doesn't have to look like wood. Uh, these are options that you have, no matter what you do. There's not one way to do anything. Uh, something else was, when I was weighing it, I put a board under one tire while I weighed the other so it would stay level. And the difference, 194 pounds versus 192.8 might be that Bondo right there. I really caked that stuff on. Let's say you uh, go camp once in a while and then you get home and you throw a tarp over this thing. The wood on it would last a really long time using those four coats that I used. Doesn't have to be complicated. I mean, it looks good, really good considering a semi hit it and it's set outside all winter long without a tarp. I I'm pretty happy, pretty happy. As I review the list of things I wanted to share with you guys today, I just want to remind you, if you like the video, please like, subscribe, and share. I'd like to build a whole lot more of these campers and get really trick with them and uh, have some fun with it. Your support would definitely help with that. Uh, here's the wood for the bottom. Uh, this is the next trailer. It's a 1,700-pound rated uh, hauling capacity. It's from Harbor Freight. It was $550. And we're going to build another one. Can't tell you how much I appreciate... Uh, you guys just uh, watching my videos. It's been a big surprise to get some views on this thing. I uh, sincerely thank you. Another thing I found is that uh, every time I stopped at a gas pump, people would come over and be like, hey, where'd you get that thing? Where did, where did you buy that? And uh, they were always surprised I made it. It is a one-off camper, but there's a lot of little one-off campers out there. So uh, that was just a little tiny bit of joy that came along uh, completely unexpectedly.